Next to single cycle waveforms, I've got to say that zones is my absolutely favorite thing to do with a simulator. Let's get right to it. So, so far, we've experimented with loading one sample into one track. We've seen stereo samples, but zones is the magic here. So, with a zone, you can have up to eight samples in one channel. And those samples are accessible via CV. When you're on a channel, instead of clicking and loading a sample like we've done, we click the Zones button. And you take your selector and you go up to the plus sign right there, meaning add a zone. So I know that the samples which I want to load are not in the folder which I'm in. So we know how to do that. So you go Load and you navigate to where the drums are. So let's go to that JW Kicks folder, which I know has a bunch of good kick drums. So we learned in previous videos that if you want to enter a folder and browse for samples in it, and you're coming from a different folder, you hit load twice. Okay, so at the top are the presets. And then these are the samples within. So he's great. So I'm going to do load and advance, which we've also learned how to do in another video. Hitting load will simply load the sample and put me back to where I was. And then I can keep browsing in other folders or have to return here. Load and advance will load into one zone and then advance into the next zone so I can fill up to eight, right? So let's go load and advance. That's a good one. Click load and advance. That's a good one. We'll go load and advance. pretty good. Load and advance. Let's just do five. All right. So just one more. All right, let's take that guy. So then we'll just hit uh, load. Okay, so here we are in a zone. And you can see that we have five samples, one, two, three, four, five. And the plus sign is still showing because we can add uh, three more, up to eight total. So five is fine. So see how if you scroll down into this area here, it shows all the voltages which you can use to hit these, these exactly. Pro tip here, if you click and hold data in, the, in any of this center area here, Watch it reflow all these numbers evenly. Boom. So there's a few ways to trigger zones. The first one is called gate rise. So what gate rise is, is that every time this gets a trigger, the CV value is red. And changes to this CV value, like in between gates, is not taken into account. In continuous mode, these CVs are red. But if there's any shift in the CV that's coming in, automatically goes to that next reading and changes zones. It's a little confusing, but if you play with it, <laughs> you'll see it work. Um, my favorite is random, which means that every time, so this turns off all the, all the CV values, every time this is triggered, you're going to get a random drum sound in this case. And then advance means that every time this is triggered, this is going to advance in a row. It's going to play in circle. All right. So let's go to random, which is my favorite way of creating glitched out drum hits. Um, this is blinking up here, which means it's zone select. And we'll get into that in a minute. 
<laughs> the way you can turn that off is by double clicking on zone. All right. So now if I hit this trigger here, you'll see that it's playing a random sound every trigger. And you can see it changing zone numbers right up there in the red. All right, so it's playing a random sample each time. This is all happening on one channel. So it is a stereo channel, so I think I'm going to strip that out. So we've learned how to do this in previous videos, so this is just review. We go to stereo right in the second channel, click, and go all the way back to master. So it's its own channel. Then I go to the right sample now, click, and I go all the way to none. So this is all happening, five different sounds coming from one mono channel. All right, so I'm going to get a clock going here, and I'm just going to get a Euclidean pattern coming from Euclidean circles. So you can hear that every time that gets hit, it's sending a random, random sample out. All right, so let's stop that. All right, so let's load some, uh, some snare sounds into two here. So click on zones for channel two. All right, go load. Take that guy. I'll go load and advance. And let's take that guy. Load and advance. Here's a good one. We'll do that one. That one. Kind of a fun one. Let's do that one. All right, there. Go back to zones, and these are all in there now. All right. So let's do the same with this one. We'll go gate, and we'll go to random. All right. And double tap on zone select here to turn that off. Again, we'll talk about zone select in, in just a minute here. Okay, so we have two channels now. Let's turn this one into mono also. So I'll click on stereo right and take it back to master. And go here and take the right channel out there. Hopefully you're starting to understand some of these workflows from the previous videos. So now two, channel two, will trigger these samples randomly too. All right. So we're going to have a pretty glitched out little drum kit here. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start the clock again. Okay, and now coming from Euclidean circles, channel two, I'm going to come into gate for channel two here. pretty dope. So I guess my feeling with this is that if you're buying a $900 module and you're setting up like, you know, eight channels with eight drum sounds, I think you can do better. And I think zones is a great way to handle that because you can get so much out of just two channels. Using zones, you could set up a whole drum kit in just one channel. You could use eight samples and access all those samples very precisely with CV. For example, if I was using voltage block, I know that voltage block goes from zero to five volts. So I could go in here and, t and turn this to gate rise and come into these 
voltages and make them reflect zero to five volts. So I could access all these really specifically. So I might put this one to four. Let's say 450. And I could put this one to four. Put this one to 350. this one to three. Okay, so now let's set this up. So now in voltage block, I understand. I'm sorry, you can't see voltage block. It's out of the shot. That's all right. So now to access these via CV, Go down here to off, and let's go with 1A. We're just dealing with channel 1 right now. So out of 1A, I'll go into voltage block. All right, and I'll start my clock here. I'm going to mute channel 2. You can see that it's just playing one hit there, right? So I'm just adjusting voltage coming out really slowly here. So now we're on four. There's the third sample, the third zone. There's zone two. There's zone one. So I'm precisely changing those zones per hit coming out of the voltage block. So now in voltage block, I could set them to play really specific hits. There you go. So we're getting a trigger from Euclidean circles, but the samples are being specifically changed from voltage block. You can see my zones changing there. So now it's not random at all. Now I've chosen those samples. So from voltage block or from anything else that's going to send CV very deliberately, I have a lot of control over which zone is being chosen. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to edit specific zones.